like to hear, Lou, this is one of the really important questions that I would like to hear your answer. How has uh, being, how has your life being a CEO changed you or changed the people's perception towards you? I've actually never been a CEO. I don't know where that, that question comes from. Um, but I actually worked with the CEO. Um, yeah. and worked, when he um, stepped down from that role, I worked with a management team of CEOs. Um, and it was just good to get the reinforcement that the skills I have and the skills at that time in that role was actually recognised that, you know, I'm able to support someone at the highest level of, of what they need. Um, so, you know, it was, it was a great feeling to be recognised and to be asked, you know, can you assist the CEO? This is what they need. They'll come to you for the work they want to do. So it was just, you know, it was a great feeling to know that my skills were being recognised rather than my disability. Oh, thank you. That's one good motivation that you shared to me there. And also, uh, Lou, it's, this is quite a, a funny story and also a, a big impact that once in your life, your profile was used by a particular certain advertising company or the ad advertisement campaign that your profile or your uh, photo was on the wall how did you feel about it so it was interesting i saw this email come out and it was in some sector newsletters asking for people with certain types of disability that are a bit against the norm so you know autism generally speaking uh -huh affects more males and females. So they're looking for a female person with autism or they're looking, so they're looking for opposites to what the norm is. Um, so we're running an ad campaign to promote how not everyone with disability can be stereotyped, like people are different basically. And I contacted them and said, I'm the perfect person for your ad campaign because I don't fit into any of those categories and my disability isn't classified or it doesn't have a known name um, for my conditions and I said yep come and come and audition the funny thing was they said to me at the end of that day they said you know you are the best person that auditioned the way you could remember the script and, and repeat it was great mm -hmm. um, you know we'd like you to be part of the campaign you know and I thought oh that's exciting something different and so I get to the day of the of the um, filming etc and I said oh you know where are my lines and they said oh no we're not having you reading the lines I said oh I thought that was the point. And they said, no, because you don't sound like you have a disability. And I, I laughed and I said, what, so what does disability sound like? Like, I sort of got where they were coming from because what it was, it was the beginning of um, promoting the National Disability Insurance Scheme. And what they were trying to do was under, get all Australians to understand generally what disability was about. So they were very much stereotyping going, well, we need someone who you can tell has got a disability. Um, by their voice, about the way they speak, which I didn't appreciate because I don't agree with it, but I could see where they were coming from. So from that, like a series of photos were taken of me. I was in the ad for, if you turned away, you wouldn't have noticed me. So I was in the ad for like a second. Um, that's all cool. It was still fun. And then when I started my job with the NDIS at the beginning of the year, someone said, oh, I know who you are. Your photo's up on the wall at reception. Cool. And I'm like... I've walked past that spot so many times and obviously I haven't seen it. So I went out and there was this massive print of me on the wall from that ad campaign that was like five years earlier. So that's where that story comes from. It was quite amusing, but it was a lot of fun to do. Yeah, it's a fun story. And I mean, yeah, you're right. It's uh, amusing seeing yourself in that huge wall. And yeah. I'm so proud of you, Lou. Quite famous and celebrity. <laughs> Thanks. No worries. Uh, moving on to another question, Lou. Being a Rotarian member, how did you give back to the community that you're passionate advocate? So I've done a, um, a leadership program, I think it was like in 2012, mm -hmm. and it really made me look at what I wanted to achieve in my life and what goals I had. Um, one of them was to quit my current job. Mm -hmm. at the time and I did 
And I remember going to Parliament House to be presented like at graduation and the senator that presented the student said, what was your biggest achievement? I said, I quit my job. She was in stitches. She thought that was the most hilarious thing to say it was an achievement. But it was because it was creating a lot of stress for me. Um, and I've had a kidney transplant in 2011. And the specialist said, you need to choose the stress of your job or killing your kidney. Um, you need to make a decision because it's going to kill your kidney. They stressed your undone. So I quit my job. And I had a few other goals in that um, program. And one of them was to be able to give back to the community. And it's like, I want to do something where I can give back. You know, it, it's nice to feel like you're able to contribute to them like they have contributed to your life. So I looked at joining a local service club and I remember emailing them going, I'm interested in becoming a member. And they're really keen. And I said, yeah, yeah, we'd love to meet you. And then I wrote back and said, just letting you know that I have disabilities, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. It took them a month to get back to me. And I thought, yep, they're already stereotyping me. They're stereotyping the fact that how can she give back to the community when she won't be able to do physical, like, working bees and stuff. And I thought, you know what, you don't deserve me, if that's your attitude. And then I was speaking to an acquaintance and she said, oh, my dad's in the Rotary Club of Hoppers Crossing. Um, why don't you go and check them out? Here's the president's number, give her a call. And they were really open to me joining. Um, There's a few Rotarians in the club that are a bit sceptical and it took a little while to convince them. But, you know, like I said, actions speak louder than words. I'm not going to sit there and try to promote myself of, of why you should accept me. I'll show you that I'm worthy. Um, and as a result of that, you know, I, I love being in Rotary and I, I've been on lots of different committees in Rotary, both at a club level and a district level. Um, I've been involved in a program called Shine On Awards, which is a great community program that actually recognises people with disability and what they've achieved in their life. And it's run every year and anyone can nominate anyone out there. Um, and so I was in, involved in that and... Um, not this year, Rotary year. So 2018, 2019, I was actually received Rotarian of the Year Award for my club, which is a real honour. Like I was, I was shocked that I did it, but I was very, very honoured. Yeah. And then at this year's end of Rotary year, 2019, 2020, I received something called the Royce Abbey Award, which is basically about you living the life of Rotary and everything you do in your life is about serving the community and you know you, you live and breathe that 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 philosophy of life um yeah. it's the first time anyone in my club has received that award that honor so i was really humbled to have received it um to recognize the work i've done so i've been with rotary now for eight years and still loving it they're like a second family to me oh wow you're not just a a member but honorable member yeah <laughs>